Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're sitting in the shooting shack with like 40 mile an hour winds and 30 degrees outside. But I wanted to talk about something that I get asked about all the time. As a matter of fact, it was one of the first things that Jason and I talked about when we first met, and that is break-in procedures on a brand new precision rifle or any rifle, but typically people do these types of break-in procedures to their new precision rifles. And that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Probably going to kick a hornet's nest because everybody has an opinion on this subject, and mine is just that, my opinion based on my experiences and talking to a lot of other folks that are actually in the barrel making business. So with that being said, guys, if you enjoy the content that we produce here at the Military Arms Channel, please take a moment to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Also hit that notification bell, comment down below. We look forward to reading those comments. It helps us with the algorithms. And with that being said, let's get started with today's video and debunk some myths about what you need to do to break in your barrel, at least in my opinion. So let's talk about break-in procedures and what I do. So when I got this Bagara, this is one of my most accurate bolt-action rifles. You've seen it here on the Military Arms Channel many times. You've also seen me post groups from this thing on Instagram quite often. And this gun just shoots lights out. This is an outstanding bolt-action rifle chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. This barrel has never seen a rush in over 600 rounds or so that I've fired it so far. And I'm going to show you some bore scope footage. I'm going to show you some bore scope footage of what this gun looks like after it's fired. I think we fired about a half a box of shells, like 10 rounds out of it. Uh, then I bore scoped it to show you what it would look like. And then I talk, I'll talk about my cleaning procedure. After I cleaned the barrel, I scoped it again to show you what it looked like. So let's talk about that break-in procedure before we get into cleaning of barrels. So when I break in a rifle, what I do is, in this case, I'll take the bolt out of the receiver. I'll take a peek down the bore, and I'll usually do this before I buy it, but if you get something mail order, you're kind of stuck with it unless you want to return it. I'll take a peek down the bore, make sure there's no obstructions, and then I'll take a wet patch, and I'll show you the, the, the solvent that I use, and I'll run a wet patch down the barrel. I'll let this solvent set for a little while, then I'll run a few dry patches through it, and then put the bolt back in, and I start shooting, and I won't clean the barrel again, probably for another 100 rounds or so. And when I say clean a barrel, I don't mean scrub, 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 try to get every drop of copper out of it, and then go back to shooting it. By that, by, by clean the barrel, I mean put some wet patches down through the barrel and let the solvent work, break up the carbon, run some patches through until it's dry, and then resume shooting for another 100 rounds or so. And if I do put a brush down a barrel, I will only put a nylon brush down the barrel. So my break-in procedure is very simple. Inspect the bore, make sure there's no obstructions, run a wet patch through it, run some dry patches through it, start zeroing your rifle and just shoot the gun. Now, I know people are gonna say in the comments, oh, that's crazy, you gotta get the copper out of there, the copper fouling will screw up your accuracy and all this other stuff. I've destroyed barrels. So I learned over time and also surfing the forums that really what Gail McMillan said, one of the greatest barrel makers in history, he's passed on, but Gail was one of the best and I'm sure you've heard of Macmillan Rifles. And I'm going to post a link to a discussion that talks about Gale and what he said about barrel break-ins. And he'll tell you, or he would have told you what I just told you when I opened this video up. Take your gun out and shoot it. It's going to shoot the best if you have a good high quality barrel. It's going to shoot the best from that first round and it's only going to get worse until the barrel wears out. Okay, now, with that being said, if you get a barrel from an okay barrel manufacturer where the tooling isn't kept sharp and their tolerances are such that they'll allow the barrels to get a little bit sloppy, generally speaking, those types of rifles will shoot better after you put 50 or 100 rounds through them. That's what I call settling the barrel in, and then it's going to shoot its best until it starts to shoot itself out. Why? Because you're going to have burrs and imperfections in the barrel that are more pronounced than in a barrel that's more high quality, a, a higher end barrel. Okay, so in the United States, we do cutting of the barrels most typically. So we'll ream the chamber and we'll cut the barrel with a tool and put the riflings in the barrel. Uh, hammer forging has been popular in Europe since post-World War II, but we're starting to see hammer forging become popular in the United States. My Daniel Defense uh, bolt action rifle, it is a hammer forged rifle and it shoots lights out just like my Bagara and this has a Spanish made barrel in it. So anyway, as it comes to break-ins, I don't do a break-in. I don't do the fire one, clean one, fire two, clean two, and I will never, ever, ever 
put any type of metal brush through my barrel. And I definitely will not use stainless steel brushes I've seen on the market. I won't use one of those stupid tornado brushes that's supposed to get everything out of the board. That is a great way to destroy a, a quality barrel if you have a nice barrel. So with that being said, let's talk a little bit about the cleaning procedures that I do on rifles like this and maintain sub-minute accuracy. If you're like me and you carry a handgun every single day for self-defense, you may want to get yourself some insurance, concealed carry insurance that is, and I use USCCA. I've been a member of theirs for a couple of years now and it gives me the peace of mind knowing that if I find myself in that rare event of having to use my firearm in self-defense, all I have to do is pick up the phone, don't speak to the police, nothing, just pick up the phone, call USCCA, immediately you have legal representation and they'll help get you through a very difficult time potentially in court if you face criminal charges or otherwise. They have a growing network of over 1,200 attorneys and you can choose your own attorney. They have three different plans that you can choose from, pick the one that's right for you. They have online training courses, discounts, all sorts of stuff depending on which plan you pick. But I highly recommend having that insurance because you might need that insurance if you find yourself in that unfortunate situation where you have to use your firearm. Again, guys, there's a link down below in the video description. Now that we've covered off on break-in procedures, which I don't believe in those, I don't use them other than just shooting my rifle, how do I maintain my barrels? All right, so I get certain cleaning supplies that I use that I've found work for me. Now this is, we're talking several decades of me shooting precision rifles and going through everything from hops to, you know, sweet 762, all this other stuff, a high ammonia concentrate to stuff that has very little or no ammonia in it. And over the years, I've finally settled on a product called Bortec, and this is the Eliminator Bore Cleaner, and I'll explain why here in a moment. I don't recommend using high ammonia on steel barrels. Ammonia is corrosive. O ammonia will cause rust if you don't clean the barrel, then oil it before you put it away. If you, you know, scrub and scrub and scrub with ammonia and then just go set it in the safe and you next time you go out to shoot it, you will have rust in your barrel. Ammonia is very, very, um, it's a very, very strong solvent and it's totally unnecessary. You don't need it. Some people are going to use high ammonia content solvents because it can, they, they believe it's going to break down the copper. We're going to talk about copper fouling here in just a moment. So I don't use any ammonia. So let's take a look at what the, the label says here on the Bortec stuff. So first of all, it contains no ammonia, safe for all barrels. And it goes back to ammonia being, you know, potentially bad. All right, but if you use it properly, it, it's fine. I just don't use it. All right, so how do I clean my barrels? Well, I follow these instructions for the most part. Wet three to four patches with the eliminator, push it through, and starting from the rear, pushing outward if you can, if your rifle allows for that. And do not ever, under any circumstances, push and pull a, a, a patch or a brush through your barrel. Don't stop midway, pull it back, thinking you're scrubbing your middle, then you're gonna scrub your end, then you're gonna scrub here. Just push the patch through and push the, the crud out the end of the barrel. If you start scrubbing the barrel back and forth, you're gonna do damage to the barrel, all right? And then next time, it says, uh, take 10 to 15 passes with a, uh, a tight-fitting nylon brush with the eliminator on it. When I do use a brush, on my barrel, it will be a nylon brush. All right, I don't have one out here today. I forgot to bring it out, but um, I never, ever, ever put a metal brush down my barrel. There's no reason for it. And especially people that push it out and pull it back against that crown, um, you're bringing back metal shavings and stuff like that. You're hitting in the crown when you pull it back as a great way to destroy the accuracy of your gun. Push the stuff out the end and never use anything more abrasive than nylon. That's for me, you do you. Okay, I'm just explaining my process and my precision rifles all shoot really, really well and continue to shoot really, really well. And then it says, um, repeat step one and until uh, you let the stuff soak, repeat step one, let it soak for five minutes or so and then run patches through it until the patches come out clean. Okay, well, first of all, let's talk about a rod. Dewey rods, I have them and use them out in the shooting shack. We keep this Tipton rod out here. This has nylon on it, and then out here we have brass. All the materials in this are softer than the bore of the barrel. Uh, one thing you don't want to do is put like triple patches on there, double patches, and just push until your rod's bending and force stuff through your barrel. Great way to damage it, even if you have a good uh, bore, uh, a bore cleaner like this particular cleaning rod. All right, so I have nylon on here and a brass fitting that the tips are gonna screw into. Get some jags that are, that are brass um, that you can screw into here and then use the appropriate size jag. Don't use one that's too small, especially don't try to force a larger one through your barrel. And then find patches 
that fit and work with the Jag type that you're using. In this case here, the patches that I use on my 6.5 Creedmoors. All right, just some old Birchwood Casey cleaning patches. And so now following the instructions of Bortec, you can see the progression of when I cleaned this barrel. So today we fired the gun, put about 10 rounds through it. Then I went back, I bore scoped it after freshly firing it, and then I cleaned it. So you'll see the progression here. You see a lot of carbon on the first patch that went through. Next time it went through, there's, there's a laminator on it. You'll see that there's less carbon. There's more laminator on it. Now you're seeing more of that, that kind of bluish, greenish tint. That's, that's copper, okay, causing that. And then you can see the progression as I push the patches through. And then down here, these last two patches are dry. And that is the end of my cleaning process when I'm not using a nylon brush. If I go 100 rounds between cleanings, I typically, I'm, I'm patching it and not brushing it maybe somewhere in between just randomly, I'll put a nylon brush through the barrel. But having bore scoped the gun, having gone through this process with patches and with nylon brushes, the results are darn near the same. So let's talk about a couple of things that people talk about on the internet. First of all, there, I, I've heard people say, and, and I just don't even know how to respond. I've heard people say that if you just keep shooting the barrel and you never scrub it out and get all that copper fouling out of the gun, eventually it's going to constrict the point, the bore to the point that it's going to blow the barrel up or create unsafe pressures. Absolute hogwash. If you believe that's true, go watch our BCM video where we fired 8,000 rounds through a rifle and haven't so much as run one patch through the barrel and it hasn't blown its barrel up. And when I show you bore scope footage, it still has lands and grooves. Copper hasn't smeared itself in there and made the lands and grooves disappear. All that's wives tales. None of that stuff is true. So typically when you fire a gun like this, this is a little bit of a hot rod cartridge. You're gonna have the, the chamber area. There's gonna be a little bit of run out, a lead where the bullet's gonna jump from the case to the rifling. And then when it does that, it's gonna engage with those riflings. That's when it starts to impart that spin on the bullet at high velocity. And that's where you're gonna see some, some copper buildup right in about this section of the barrel is that that bullet starts to settle in and it's twist rate. Then as you get further down the barrel, based upon what you'll see in the bore scope, you'll see less and less copper fouling because now the, that you know bullet is up to speed spinning and it's not shedding as much copper. So really the copper fouling is taking place back here. But as you'll see in the bore scope footage, there's no need for me to scrub every last bit of it out. And why do I say that? With copper fouling, you're, what the copper is doing is there are little tiny, sometimes microscopic imperfections in the barrel, even the nicest barrel, the best barrel on the market you can, you can find because the barrel's been cut in most instances here in the United States. There is hammer forging. We we'll talk about that in another video. But there are little tiny imperfections that that copper is going to fill in those imperfections. And then it's going to make the bullet just kind of glide over it. You're not going to, every time you fire, you're not adding a little bit more and more and more copper to the point where the bore constricts and again blows the gun up. Nonsense. This gun still shoots sub minute. It still has copper fouling in it. For those that, of you out there that scrub and scrub and scrub your barrel and you use ammonia and you do all this stuff, you get every bit of copper out that you think you can. What's the first thing you do before you shoot a group? You fire fouling shots. And what does a fouling shot do? The fouling shots put the copper right back in the areas you just scrubbed it out of. So for the gun to shoot optimally, you need those imperfections covered with the copper from the jacket of the bullet. So there's this balancing act. You don't want to overclean your barrel. You just want to clean it enough to maintain accuracy. And that's what I'm advocating for. All right. So there's another thing that people will talk about this carbon ring. And I can show you video uh, footage and some stills from the bore scope on this rifle of what the carbon ring looks like. And it appears on the neck of the case when the case is setting in the, in the chamber right here, is the neck of the case and it runs up against the end of the chamber. The bullet's running out a little bit into the barrel in that area of the lead where there's no rifling, where it just slowly kind of picks up the rifling. And right there where the bullet and the case meet, when it ignites, that bullet leaves. And it's gonna be a lot of, you know, force and fire and heat being generated right there. And it's gonna make a little carbon ring right at that point that's just ever so thin. I clean, I don't worry about the carbon ring and all the other stuff you'll hear people talking about. And they started talking about these things because bore scopes have become easily accessible. You can pick them up off Amazon. I have one that just plugs into my laptop and that's how I'm getting the footage I'm showing you right now. So you can see what's going on in the barrel. But bore scope is nothing new. They used to do it the old analog way when Gail McMillan was, was making barrels. 
And so it's a good idea to keep an eye on what's going on in your barrel. You can look for rust, you can look for imperfections or problems that you might find in the barrel, which will give you an indication of when it might be time to put a new barrel on your rifle. But generally, you'll figure that out when the groups start to open up. That, in a nutshell, explains my theory on break-in procedures and how I clean my precision rifles. And if you guys follow me on Instagram, I post groups all the time of my precision rifles. I treat them all the same way. And these are the results I get. I get sub-minute accuracy out of guns that are capable of it. So now, this is an opinion based upon my decades of experience going through all sorts of different things from fire lapping to using every crazy solvent that's on the market and finally settling on this procedure that works for me. It works for Jason, works for my buddy Aaron and other people that shoot with me. We've all come to the same conclusion through experience. So you do you, this is what I do. I'm answering the questions that I've been asked regarding these two processes, break in and cleanings. So I look forward to your comments down below guys. I'm sure you're gonna be very opinionated. This is a hot button topic for a lot of guys that are into long range shooting with the shooting sports taking on, you know, PRS and things like that becoming very, very popular long range shooting coming online, a lot, lot more people doing it. These types of conversations take place on the discussion forums and, and stuff like that. And I'm just throwing my two cents in for what I do. I'm not saying it's 100% right, Somebody may have a better method. I'm just telling you what works for me. So comment down below. I look forward to reading those comments. If I get a really good comment that um, you know has some other information in it that, I, that I've either found to be true or something I wanna try, I may even pin that comment. All right, guys, if you enjoy the content that we produce here at the Military Arms Channel, please consider becoming part of our Patreon family. There is a link in the video description below. Click that link, you'll get direct access to me. I answer all private communications. You'll get early access to videos like this one. We have a Discord server set up. We're doing Twitch again, all sorts of stuff. So please come on over, check us out on Patreon, link down below. Right here on YouTube, you can support us by hitting that little join button underneath the video player you're watching right now. And last but not least, guys, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thank you for 13 years of support. We'll talk to you guys soon. And I'm looking forward to the firestorm in the comments section. <laughs>